Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind, episode 117. My one piece of advice is to remember that you determine your reaction in any given situation and you determine what your health is going to be. You're the driver in the driver's seat. Make sure it's a good drive. Benjamin Franklin once said, Do not curse the darkness, rather light a candle instead. If you're ready to set your mind on fire, then prepare yourself for the Luminous Mind with your host, Rebecca Bowman. Today's fire starter is Amy McDougall. After graduating with her doctor of pharmacy, she worked in many aspects of pharmacy, including hospital, retail, home, IV, and compounding. She has 20 years of pharmacy experience and over 500 hours of education on hormones, gastrointestinal health, nutrients, weight loss, and emotional health. Over the past five years, while using the same techniques she can share with you, she's experienced a calmer, clearer mind, less pain, depression, more patience and happiness, and has shed over 20 pounds of fat which has stayed off. She enjoys teaching and learning from patients. Amy received training from Dr. Ben Lynch on the MTFR mutations and appropriate treatments. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. This is going to be just the most different conversation I think that we've ever had on our show. I'm hoping we're going to learn a lot about, you know, kind of go through with us and tell us a little bit more about yourself. And then let's hit on some of those things that we talked about in your bio. Okay. Sounds great. So I would love to tell you about my family. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to hear about it. So I have a fabulous husband that supports me in all my crazy ideas. And that's really great because I'll say, hey, honey, I really learned about this new thing and I want to go to this class. It's in Fort Lauderdale. Is that okay? And he's like, sure. So I have a wonderful (laughs) husband that supports me. That would be nice. I need to go learn how to help others. And it's really wonderful to have that support system there. So thank you, my husband, Ray, for uh, letting me be here and uh, supporting me in my wonderful dreams. I have six children. Uh, My oldest is just turned 20, and she's in Mexico right now serving a mission for the Mormon Church. Awesome. And then I have five younger kids. My second child is a senior, and my youngest child is a kindergartner. So I really understand what it's like to have kindergartners and babies all in the same house. And that is called sleep deprivation. (laughs) And then teenagers, right, on top of that. (laughs) Right, right. Because then, you know, I thought it was hard when I was waking up in the middle of the night with a baby, but add some teenagers to the mix, and then you're really what tired is. Yeah. So, um, and I love my kids, and they really, truly are the reason that I do a lot of things is because I want to teach them to follow their dreams, but I also want to make sure that I'm taking time to help them to develop to be what they can be because they all have such amazing, incredible potential and I want to help them develop that potential. So that's a little bit about my family. That's great. And I want to hear more about your journey. You know, you talked about your husband who is so supportive of some of your crazy ideas, which is wonderful. (laughs) Tell me about some of those and how they make you unique. Okay, so 20 years ago, I graduated from pharmacy school. I had my doctor of pharmacy, and I decided I was never going to go to college again. (laughs) And so I haven't. I have just tried to learn every other way I could without actually going back to college. But (laughs) (laughs) I really have worked in a lot of different aspects of pharmacy, and I've always had a really big interest in natural type of medicine and really read a lot of articles on different herbal supplements and oils and all these different things and how they could complement and help my already good traditional side of pharmacy. And about five years ago, I started setting about hormones because I was working in a compounding pharmacy. And, and my so husband had to more. explain compounding. That's actually when you're crushing <laughs> things down, right? And making... Right. And yeah. well, actually, we make things, mostly we make things from powder. So we were making, you know, progesterone and estrogen products for women from powder. But we had to know 
you know, all these things about hormones and interactions and how they interfere with one another. Well, taking and learning classes about hormones actually introduced me into a field of medicine called integrative medicine. And integrative medicine is like traditional medicine and like my traditional pharmacy experience and then natural medicine all squished together. So it's like this squishing of these two types of medicine, like a baby bumblebee. And <laughs> so it's great because you get the best of both worlds. And the really cool thing is, is that you just don't stop learning. So I learned about hormones and it was for me, it was like this huge light went off and I went, oh, well, that's why my womanly wonderful time of month is so horrible. And that's why I've gained weight where I've gained it. And it just went on and I learned all these things about what was going on with my body and what was going on with other people's bodies. And from there, I went into learning about how to really help heal people's tummies because, you know, gastrointestinal, yeah. Rebecca, is a big word, right? <laughs> <laughs> Difficult um, to say. You know, <laughs> because I realized there's so many people suffering out there from irritable bowel and colitis and things like that that really don't know how to treat it and needed help. So I got into that and that then went into food sensitivities and from there. And then um, about two and a half years ago, I started studying the MTHFR gene. And the MTHFR is just one single gene that codes for an enzyme, yet it affects 240 different reactions that occur in your body. So people with this gene that have a bad copy of a gene, right, because your genes are a code, so if you have one single bad copy of this MTHFR gene, it increases your chances of having depression, of having anxiety, of having migraine headaches, of having birth defects, you know, having children with birth defects, or having miscarriages because your child didn't fully develop wow. um, because you couldn't make the methyl group that they needed. But it also has to do with energy level and cancer growth and um, the list goes on and on. Um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, they've even found links between this MTHFR and that. And so it's just such an important, valuable tool to help improve people's overall health. I went through all this training to learn how to actually look at people's genetics and from that just give them the nutrition that they needed to bypass the genetics. Wow. So to kind of sum up in a nutshell how your paradigm has changed, do you kind of want to go into that? I mean, how did you start out, you know, with your studies? And then what have you learned that's helped you help other people along the way? So I think I used to be, a, you know, you graduate from pharmacy school, you think there's one wonderful drug for every disease out there. And what I've really learned, my whole paradigm I've learned is that everything we do affects our health. The sleep that we get, the food that we eat, the supplements that we take, how we think about ourselves all affect that health. And it affects how the genes are expressed and it affects mentally where we go, what we can do. So I just realized that I could put Band-Aids on problems in the past. Now we get to the root of the problem and we fix the root. Wow. That's the cool paradigm change right there. Well, and that really is because sometimes we, you know, if you get on a medication, that's a lifetime, you know, from then on, you're on that medication. I mean, learning about the mutation of the genes and stuff, how can you help heal somebody through that? Tell us about some of those treatments. Well, I guess I'm going to explain a little bit about what the gene means. So it's like... You have a bunch of semis on a four-lane highway. We all know how much fun it is to drive <laughs> next to a semi, right? <laughs> you have a bunch of semis on a four-lane highway, and they're all loaded. They're loaded with cargo. But up ahead, there's an interchange. And at the interchange, the highway narrows to two lanes. And wow. there's only two lanes that get through. Okay, so all this cargo, all these methyl groups, that's essentially what they're carrying, is this little teeny tiny chemical. All this chemical that they're carrying cannot get through that interchange to the other side where they need it to be. So instead of you getting four lanes worth of methyl groups to work with, you only get two lanes worth. So the way we fix that is by actually just giving you what the semi trucks are carrying. Yeah, it's actually methylfolate. It's just giving you a certain type of folate that your body normally would make by itself from your food. 
Wow. And so how do you so, do the dosage? Does it come oils or, like you said, powder or how does... <laughs> no, it actually it comes in a capsule or a tablet. Okay. And you have to make sure it's from... Like, I'm really picky about where I get my things from because, uh, you know, a study in Canada in 2013 showed that of 44 most popular supplements sold in the U.S. and Canada, they were all manufactured by 12 companies. And of those 12 companies, only two of those companies had all their products have what they said they had in them. The actual ingredient in the amount it said it had, and they didn't have any contamination or fillers in them. Wow. Okay, that's so the, scary. <laughs> the 10 companies out there had products that were big selling products that were contaminated or did not contain what they said they had. When I buy a product, it has to be prescription quality, which means they test the end product for purity and potency. So we usually buy methylfolate in a form of tablets or capsules, but we have to be very cautious when we dose methylfolate because your body hasn't had enough of it. So we have to go very slow and very low. And then we also have to fix other things that might go on because I was telling you that everything affects it, right? Your yeah. sleep, what you're eating. So we have to address whole body health and what you're doing. Wow. A whole body as we're doing this. So it's really, uh, you know, improving overall health first and then introducing the methylfolate. It can make a huge difference. You know, migraine patients, you know, I've been a miracle worker, <laughs> but it's not me, right? It's just <laughs> now that's the thing. And, you know, my mission with this isn't to say, yeah, I'm, this is really good. And this is me. My mission with all of my medical care that I do now is really empowering the patient so that they can heal themselves and so that they can go on to fulfill their mission. It just sounds like most of the work that's required really does come down to the patient. You can only give them medication that goes so far, right? They have to fix some of these other problems that they have. It's true. And do you teach, I mean, you teach them those types of skills then? I do, yeah. Even before they have their gene test back, we have a list of five things that we work on to improve their overall health while they're waiting for their gene testing to come back. Oh, wow. So. And so then when it finally does come in, you know kind of where to begin at that point because yeah. they're fixing those yep. other... That is great. Yep. What are some of the challenges that you've had along the way and what were some things that you learned from them as you're doing these studies and so working challenges, with patients? <laughs> the hardest challenge for me is when I... I'm working with a patient that's struggling and I know what they need to do to fix it, but they won't do it. That's the biggest struggle. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I want to help them so bad and they won't let me. Yeah. And that's probably my biggest. And, and what have you done? I mean, I guess that <laughs> that's kind of sad because there's really nothing you can do. Right. I mean, other than just, right. You just kind of learn to accept that some people will take your message and then other people won't. I mean, how do you deal with that? As a, no, and it's always that way, right? Yeah. Any speaker, any teacher, there are people in that classroom or in that group that are going to get what you're teaching and they're going to take it away and they're going to love it and they're going to make it their own. <laughs> and then there's people that are going to walk away and say, that was the silliest thing I ever did. And you have to know that you're not there for those silly people walking away. You're there for those two or three people that love it and learn from it and can change their lives with it. That's for sure. Um, yeah. So I really have to concentrate on saying, you know what, it's those people that love it and are going to change and are going to change what they're doing and heal themselves. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, all of us kind of have that mission, you know, with our own mission, our own personal mission that some people accept it and some people don't. And so it really does come down to just trying to accept that and, and understand that everyone's got their free will to make their choices. So, so, so go <laughs> so ahead. True. and You know, you talked a little bit about, you know, helping people with migraines and stuff like that. Tell us about some of the services that you offer and what success you've seen with that. Some of the services I offer, usually I do appointments with patients where we can do phone appointments or in-person appointments. Um, and that's worked really well for problems like a headache or depression or anxiety. But like my weight loss classes, I was doing a live class and that was just really hard because I think I was giving them too much material all at once and we didn't go slow enough. Um, but now I actually have an online weight loss course. 
Oh, really? It's about 75% developed, yeah, so that they can go through it more slowly and be introduced to it in a small way. I just find that with changes like this, like if I have a patient come in and I'm working with them on anything, a lot of times they tend to get overwhelmed because there's so many things to work on. So if we'll just work on two or three things at a time, it makes a huge difference in them being able to complete it and change that one thing so that then they can move on to the next thing. Um, And so really the individual patient appointments work the best for that, but a class format is great. An online format, because they're going at their own pace, is actually really an excellent format for that. So when you do the class format, do you teach more of like the lifestyle skills that you were talking about? And then maybe as they improve those work at trying to work more one on one with them? Or do you start one in one and then maybe kind of wean them out by doing more group stuff? You know, like I mean, like with with addiction, sometimes they start out, it's very concise to that one person. And then as time goes on, they just you start bringing in other people just as a as a support group. And the class, the the weight loss is they come to the class and then if they need specific help in certain areas, like if they need help with the stress hormone cortisol, then we work one-on-one. But mostly they just come to the class all together and learn at, you know, a slower pace because most people need to understand the basics of, you know, sleep. Really, how does your sleep affect your weight? How does it affect your health? They all need to understand how important that is because we're all willing to cheat ourselves out of sleep to get this one yeah. more thing in our day. Exactly. You know? We don't realize what the long-term consequences of that are. You know, and so those type of things, you know, there are certain standard things that I pretty well teach to everyone that, that would be very helpful to have in the classroom format. So I like to have them come to the class and then work one-on-one on the harder stuff. Yeah, maybe once they pinpoint it themselves, then you kind of mm-hmm. can help them through that. Before we go on, let us take a minute and hear about our sponsors. Changing a paradigm takes some study, but like me, you are probably super busy. That's why we've teamed up with Audible. Go to our website, theluminousmind.net, get a free month of Audible with two audiobooks thousands of titles in exchange for only books that you absolutely love. You too can be learning on the go to keep that fire burning. mind with Amy McDougall. Let's talk about some of the individual things that you've done for like weight loss. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about depression and, you know, just taking better care of yourself. Give us some ideas of things that you've done and then how kind of how you would assist somebody to get started. Okay. Well, if I'm seeing a patient, maybe what I should do is just kind of walk you through a patient. It sounds like yeah. what I would do with a patient. <laughs> um, okay, so let's say that you came to me and you were struggling with migraines, okay? First of all, if you're struggling with migraines, we would say, okay, well, what's your sleep like? We would talk about your sleep. Then we would look at what your diet is because there's a lot of food triggers for those migraines. So we would try to eliminate foods that would typically cause it. Then we would look at your genetic predisposition if you were still having it, okay? And what are the genes that could be causing it? And then we would work with those specific genes. We use the supplements to bypass those. So it sounds like, I mean, as far as medicine goes, that you first take a very natural approach, and then as as the uh, time goes on, if you yeah. see the natural stuff isn't helping, maybe that you move to more of the hormones and stuff like that. Am yeah. I hearing you correctly? Yeah. That's that's great. That's sometimes I think uh, sometimes doctors start the other way. <laughs> they start yeah. they start with the pills and then they try to work on the other stuff. Yeah. So you talked about working with Dr. Ben Lynch on the the MTHFR hormone. What other mentors have you had along the way that have helped make a significant difference in your success? 
Um, Mike Mutzel, it's M-I-K-E-M-U-T-Z-E-L, is a great mentor, really um, has taught me a lot. And I've actually only ever talked to him in person a couple times, but I follow him and his work and has, have read his books. And he is just a, a master's of nutrition and fitness. And he just has an incredible handle on food and how it affects everything else in your body. And his book, Belly Fat Effect, is actually a great book if you're really into the science behind weight gain and why we gain weight. Oh, wow. um, he's a fabulous mentor. And you just follow him I, like on other kinds of Twitter or something like <laughs> uh, that. High intensity health is his website. And he okay. actually has a podcast that he does through that. Um, and he's out of Denver. Other people that I really think are incredible. Uh, David Perlmutter is a, a wonderful neurologist that has done a ton of work with your brain health and Alzheimer's. He's done a lot of research into Alzheimer's and gluten. Um, and he's a great mentor. I've read a lot of his work. I've had non-health mentors that have really done a lot. I've got Maya Lisa Adams that I was uh, talking with Rebecca about earlier. She's a communications professor that does a lot of coaching with me on my business, but also on my speaking. And she's a great mentor and really makes me think twice, you know, why am I doing this and what can I do to make this more impactful for my patients and those people I'm helping. That's great. So I have been to a lot of three key elements classes. I really enjoy them. I think they're extremely helpful changing my mindset in the initial outset of all this, really helping me to address my thoughts and the power that my mind had on what was going on in my life. Yeah. So that was really good. That's great. Uh -huh. So, and do you have any books that you would recommend kind of starting out with? You mentioned one earlier with one of your mentors. Yeah, Belly you, Fat Effect. Belly Fat Effect. Yeah. And like I said, that's a really interesting, if you want to look at the science behind weight gain and how to lose weight, that is a great book. Amy Yasko writes a really good book about methylation, kind of explains a lot of the principles behind MTHFR. And I think her website has a lot of really good information if you wanted to read about more about methylation and, and how it affects you in the MTHFR gene. She's really good. Well, and would you recommend studying it before you see a doctor like yourself? Or would you recommend going to the doctor and then <laughs> studying it out? I mean, sometimes we try to be our own, you know, WebMD yeah. type of, but what are so, your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's a good thing for patients to be educated. Um, I think if you trust someone totally, completely all the way, you know, you're going to run into problems because not everyone has all the answers. I don't have every single answer. That's why I'm always doing more research and finding out. And, and I like to tell patients, you know what, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll sure try to find out for you. It's a good thing for them to look up and it would be a good thing for them to read a little bit about it just so that they're not overwhelmed. Yeah. As it goes on. I think it's a great idea for you to always learn all you can about what's going on in your body. That's great. And the advantage of being educated in it versus just trusting the doctor is maybe you'll get a better diagnosis if you, you know, you yourself can kind of help pinpoint some of those problems. Would you agree with that or? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's going to give you a better idea of what questions you should ask and what you should expect, you know, because if you go into the appointment and you think you're not going to have to make any changes, that's going to be pretty disappointing for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like we were discussing before, sometimes we think that we can just take uh, medication and have everything just fixed, where sometimes we have to do a little bit of work to be able to see the, the results that we want to see. Yes. So tell us some of the habits that you have in your personal life that you think have been the most beneficial in treating some of these issues of, I mean, you talked about in your bio having a, a calmer, clearer, you know, less pain and less depression. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you've developed some of the habits that help you gain that. So habits in my life that are that I've developed, probably the most important one for me is exercise. And I know that's a four letter word for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> However, exercise is so amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a disease state that it didn't help. Yeah. Um, you know, it improves anxiety, it improves depression, it improves obesity, it improves high blood pressure, it improves diabetes, the list goes on and on. You will not find a disease state that it doesn't help. For me, my kids sometimes think that I work out a lot because I'm trying to maintain my gorgeous physique, but actually <laughs> I work out all the time because I'm trying 
to maintain my mental health. It is the one thing that has helped me to stave off, you know, the wintertime blues and to be happier and have a good, bright outlook on life. So exercise is probably the most influential habit you'll ever make. Well, and you're not talking about like running a marathon or anything, right? I mean, what would your recommend daily exercise amount be and how strenuous? So, you know what, you start out with what you can do. You start out with what you can do and then you just work up from there. You want to just continually be improving because you can't just walk every day forever and keep your body fit. Because if a bad guy's chasing you and you've only ever walked, you're not going to be able to run away. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, and your body's you meant to be pushed, right? Can. I mean, your body. Yeah, your body really is. Yeah, it's meant to be pushed. And when I first started exercising, it literally was walking. And I was walking and lifting weights at the same time with my arms. You know, I had these little five-pound weights I would carry around, and I would lift them and lift them. And it's graduated to, you know, a weightlifting class and something called high-intensity interval training. It's HIIT training. And it is so amazing at increasing your stamina, but also really helping you maintain muscle mass with a very short exercise duration. Like you can do a HIIT workout in 20 to 25 minutes and actually have better results with your body composition than you can spending 45 minutes running. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and with me, uh, when I was running, my knees were bad, my hips were hurting, you know, and so, so sometimes that was the older I got, I'm like, I can't do, you know, the endurance type exercises anymore. Did we finish off with your habits that you feel are most? No, we really didn't. I'd probably say the other, the other habit for me that has really been influential is just consistently evaluating what my thoughts were. And making sure the way I'm talking is positive well, and do to you, myself and to others. Do you do that in front of the mirror or do you just catch yourself like, you know, with the daily conversations that you have with yourself? <laughs> daily <laughs> conversations. Catching yourself in daily conversations. That's way more important than mirror time. <laughs> mirror time. Mirror time is good, you know, for you. If you have certain things that you've noticed consistently come up, catching yourself in daily conversations, that's important. But you know, that's important to address in front of the mirror, but really consistently finding the little thoughts that come up, the little niches that those little negative thoughts have and how they can wear you down. You know, my outlook has really changed and I, you know, feel like I'm a much more positive, happier person because of that. Well, and sometimes if we're not actively looking for it, do you find it's difficult to really see that until you start really searching like, you know, I mean, you may have a conversation over and over and over in your head and not realize how negative it is until you, you know, you really focus on that. Is that what you're talking about? Really? Right. Yeah, really actually catching it. And I'll have people that tell me, oh, I don't have negative thoughts. And I'm like, well, you just aren't looking hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you'll, you'll find them. Even, even the little doubt that creeps in there, right? We all have some right. of that. Right. So, you know, you all have, you have to address it and say, no, it's going to work out. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. We're not playing the what if fear game. We're going to maintain a positive outlook that it's going to work out and it's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, you can't do anything about a lot of that fear anyway, right? <laughs> Other than worry about it. It right. doesn't help anything. So that's so great. One of my, I guess one of my other mentors, Elizabeth Bassard, once told me that fear is just unfocused energy. It really is. <laughs> Right. It's it, energy you're not putting into something that's useful. Yeah. So something you can't do anything about. <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. So tell us a little bit more about what your long term goals or, you know, what plans that you have, especially in, in your studies in with the medicine that you're working on. One of my goals is just to keep up to date and make sure I'm reading research all the time and new things that come out. So I'm ahead of the game. And so that I, what I'm helping my patients with is the newest, best stuff we have. I don't want to rely on my old education all the time. I want it to be a good foundation, but I want to have that newest cutting edge research so that I can truly help patients in the best manner possible. Long-term, yeah, long-term goals, that's probably it, is just to be able to continue to help patients 
in the best way I can. That's great. I mean, we sometimes we take for granted the information that's always coming out, you know, the development as well as the the way we expand our knowledge. And so when we think that we know everything, we really limit ourselves when unless we're always continually studying and researching. Um, if you could leave a legacy, what would it be? I would want to leave a legacy of probably my children are going to be my legacy, really. <laughs> but I think my patients are, too. Just knowing that they can do it. They can do it. They can change. They can change their health. They can change how they feel. And they can change what they think. Yeah. Don't you think that sometimes our society, you know, that uh, many of us feel like we're all controlled by our emotions, you know, all the things that happen around us. But really, the reality comes to the fact that we can change, right? That we have control. Yes. Definitely. We are in control. Yeah. And our choices determine where we go. Exactly. True. That's great. So before we say goodbye, do you have any final parting words of advice for our listeners? And please give us your contact information so that we know how we can get in touch with you. All right. My one piece of advice for people, all you listeners out there, my one piece of advice is to remember that you determine your reaction in any given situation and you determine what your health is going to be. You're the driver in the driver's seat. Make sure it's a good drive. Um, my contact information is tetonsage.com is my website. You can reach me at amy, A-M-Y, at tetonsage.com. Teton Sage is T is in Tom, E, T, O, N, S is in Sam, A, G is in Golf, E. And good phone number would be 208-390-6236. That's great. We'll go ahead and we'll link up all that contact information for Amy and feel free to get in touch with her. I think she's got some interesting research that could help so many people. <laughs> so many people need it. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been so fun talking to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Rebecca, for calling. Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind. To learn more about Amy McDougall, go to our show notes at theluminousmind.net. Be sure to become a subscriber to our free email list and consider joining our program by going to the scheduling tab to become a fire starter today. Help support the podcast by making all your Amazon purchases through the free Amazon widget on our website. Also, sign up to receive two free audiobooks from Audible at theluminousmind.net. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Google+, and now Pinterest. Get our audio content by subscribing on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. To help us grow, consider telling your friends about us. Leave us a review. Tell us how we can help you so together we can continue to light minds on fire and change the paradigm of education 